All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our April 12th, 2022 Borough Council meeting. Tonight, we are conducting our monthly Borough Council meeting, both in person and virtually using the Zoom webinar and platform. We're glad that you have joined us tonight for this meeting. Participants who are attending tonight's meeting, both in person and virtually, may provide public comment during the public participation portions of the agenda and the public hearings portion of the agenda. During these portions of the agenda, community members joining us via Zoom, please raise your hand digitally and our staff will unmute your microphone one by one and announce your name. You will then be able to speak and provide comment. We will start with members of the public who are here in the council chambers tonight and then uh, go to those who have joined us remotely. We will have two public comment periods tonight, uh, one towards the beginning and one at the end. Uh, due to the breadth of tonight's agenda, we do ask that uh, members of the public providing comment, please list their, uh, limit their comments to three minutes or less. With that, we will uh, begin tonight's meeting. And thank you again for joining us. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. And Mr. Crack with roll call. Ms. Berkeley. Present. Mr. Carmonito. Present. Ms. Dugan. Mr. Kirkner. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Ms. Webb. Present. Mr. Weiss. Here. Mr. Ewald. Here. Mr. Ursler. Here. Manager's here. Assistant manager's here. Chief is via Zoom and the solicitor's here. You have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, just one item. Uh, Borough Council did meet in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss uh, police personnel issues. Uh, with that, um, the first item on our agenda tonight is a comprehensive plan update with uh, Tim Straub from HRG. Tim, if you'd like to step up to the microphone, um, keep in mind uh, staying near the microphone so those at, at home can hear you. Sometimes we have people who like to wander and it, uh, you know, loses touch. Uh, with that. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, we are. Uh, have before you a draft comprehensive plan update that we were working through uh, um, the process with a committee and we'll, we'll go over those details here shortly. Um, however, I just wanted to indicate that this is just another step in the process of the comprehensive plan and um, hope to get comments back from, from uh, the council tonight on, on the draft. Next slide, sorry. So briefly tonight, I, I hope to um, provide what a comprehensive plan is. It should be a foregone conclusion at this point. The process we took to um, create this comprehensive plan, the overall plan vision, performance areas, goals, and what are the next steps. Next slide. So a comprehensive plan is like a strategic business plan, but it delves into deeper topics within the community, specifically land use, housing, transportation, what, uh, what should be the future for your public infrastructure and economic development, natural and cultural resources. And uh, there are other requirements by the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code that dictate what items should be in your comprehensive plan. And it also is a, a, typically a 10 year guiding, guidance document that will help inform whether you need to make ordinance adjustments or if you need to start budgeting for capital improvements and or uh, what program activities you are hoping to achieve in your recreational departments and so on. Before you use the, the schedule that we adhered to, uh, initial phase was a discovery outreach. Uh, we had learned a lot about the community at that point that we, we were, weren't aware or affirmed what we were. Uh, we had a visioning process. Uh, then we took the summer of last year to synthesize all the data and information I received. Uh, and then discussed who could help implement this plan, drafted the plan, shared it with the, the, the borough staff, got some revisions, and it reissued the draft plan. Uh, and now we're in the, um, the official review process where uh, the, all the adjoining municipalities, your regional planning um, group, as well as Chester County planning, 
playing and school district has had an opportunity to review and comment and uh, the borough has received those comments. Coinciding with that review process is a public outreach process as well as a uh, uh, presentation in front of the planning commission, which was provided earlier in March. If things move well, uh, the next step would be to hold a public hearing. And I believe that you are gonna consider when to have that public hearing possibly tonight. Plan itself, we set a vision of 2031, where the residents of your community would have a, a model of sustainability, equity, and innovation in Phoenix, in Phoenixville. You have affordable housing choices and close proximity to shopping and recreation. Residents will be able to safely walk to stores and offices, past new mixed use buildings, as well as uh, familiar landmarks. Parks and open space plans will provide green, tranquil places for the residents, their families and friends, and gather and socialize and work. Next slide. From that uh, vision becomes performance, comes performance areas. And there was five areas that really stuck out as part of the process through re previous regional planning and specific borough planning that needed to be either elevated a little bit more or investigated further. And the, the five categories are active, connected, growing, sustainable, sustainable, excuse me, and vibrant. Underneath each of those performance areas are goals and objectives. Next slide, please. So under the, the active performance area, some of the goals specifically is to implement the regional trail plans that you have at, ongoing throughout your community and regionally. And then uh, there was a distinct need through the public feedback to enhance the public parks that you have. Uh, some of those parks are very active in nature, but they also wanted in areas, I think mainly because of the pandemic, just to go to socialize and take in nature. Uh, and so the other item that came out of the, of the discussions with your park and rec director was that we need to maybe start considering more well-rounded opportunities, maybe consider Spanish speaking opportunities for your residents as well. Next slide. Phoenixville will be connected in the, in the future um, better than it is now. What we discovered as part of this process is that you can get anywhere within the community with, within 15 minutes. And that's uh, within the last five years, a, a relatively pla a new planning term. And it's something that we feel like that the community should market. Uh, you could get shopping, maybe have your employment close by, go recreate and so forth. Um, and something that not every community in, in the state has and something that you can build off of. Uh, also the notion of uh, building up complete streets and complete streets is another planning term where it provides for all alternative modes of transportation to, to utilize and connect to your community and, um, and outside the region. Next slide. Uh, you're gonna continue to grow. Um, and the municipality's planning code requires that you provide for every housing type and every affordability level. And so we have to make sure that we have provisions within the, the comprehensive plan to provide, set the policy to allow to do that within your zoning ordinance. Uh, we also wanted to strengthen and enhance the character of Bridge Street and your neighborhoods connecting to Bridge Street. We're, we're very attuned to uh, you having specific neighborhoods that were identified in the previous comprehensive plan activity and how though to enhance and provide gateways to, to Bird Street, which is your borough center. Next slide. Some other items that we talk about is how we can we encourage um, infill development to be innovative and uh, responsive to the environment. Um, one of the items that came out is, you know, there is a lot of growth occurring in the community. We still have to allow for growth, but how does that look? Um, specifically for infill development. And so we have some recommendations in there and it's areas that should be exp examined further as you go into implementation through the zoning and subdivision ordinances updates. Next slide. A lot of these are, uh, uh, well, the top two goals are from your regional planning efforts. Uh, the, whenever the community got together, they discussed the opportunity of, you know, of uh, 
working on having transfer of development rights, no, knowing that Phoenixville is the hub of the region and where a lot of the infrastructure and activity should occur. And then so if we're developing in, in the borough, maybe we can transfer some of those development rights and protect the open space that is in the adjoining municipalities. Also a recommendation out of your regional plan, that's okay, is to do a regional inventory of brownfields and have that ongoing on an annual basis. Go ahead. The borough has made a commitment to being sustainable. Uh, I believe that the borough is selling itself short sometimes in that you could really advertise that and market it and grow that opportunity, I think, and get awards for the activities you've already done and celebrate the successes you have and embrace new opportunities in that area. Um, and so we discussed that through the process and what were the benefits and some of the the negatives of maybe applying for some awards uh, associated with sustainability, or is that really the focus? Or should we continue building the program that it is and trying to make strides in that area? Next slide. You've had a vibe, you have a vibrant community and um, that takes the backdrop of both the Schuylkill Highlands as well as the historic structures. You are a trail town and whether you advertise it as a trail town, uh, it is a gateway into your community and it's something that you should should enhance and bring in regional tourism you know, we made some recommendations of maybe having some more overnight opportunities uh, whether that's through a hotel or a b b and b or something along those lines uh, to the capture some more of that revenue and keep them in the community uh, as well as uh, there's a lot of state reg legislation right now in stormwater and green infrastructure planning, and there's opportunities in the community to uh, enhance that. So as indicated, we had uh, the public meeting with the Planning Commission on March 10th, received comments there. That, that presentation, as well as the comments were recorded. I have a draft of all the comments that we've received uh, from that meeting, as well as the, the comments I received from the joining municipalities, Chester County, and um, we are tabulating that, and then we will work towards uh, having a response associated therein. The public comment period is ended on March 31st. And like I said, we received comments back from all those other agencies. However, there is a public hearing yet to be had as part of the municipality's planning code adoption process with council to consider adoption, as well as consider the comments received up to this point. With that, copy of the plan is still on the website and I am here to answer any questions or comments you may have. Great, thank you, Tim. Uh, questions from council, comments on the um, presentation tonight from council? If you could explain what the public hearing next step involves and is that we sit and listen, or we engage in dialogue, or that's where we can we contribute, or is this opportunity right now part of where we make our It our could input? be either. Some communities decide to hold a public hearing and then vote that same night. In this instance, we have a public meeting. So later on, we're going to have a public hearing. Um, and so in that instance, I would anticipate, because there may be new public either online or in the audience that would want some sort of recap like I just provided. And then it would be opened up for comments and then for the, uh, the council to consider adoption at that point in time. Brian, I can add, tonight's presentation doesn't always happen for every municipality. Uh, sometimes municipalities go straight into the hearing. Uh, so I think the reason that Tim is here today uh, is to try to get comments today if you have them uh, so that uh, if we go to a hearing next month or two months from now, when we do get to that point, we're at least at a point where we're comfortable enough that there's a good chance that we'll adopt uh, the comprehensive plan. I will say there's one caveat in that there is a vision partnership grant associated with this project. I believe the sunset, I'll have to check with, or Gene may know better, or Kelly, I believe the sunset's June. So if 
it extends past that, we will need to extend the that uh, that's that schedule. Thank you, Mr. President. If, if I may, I have a a, a couple of comments. Um, one, I think the goal, as stated in your presentation, G11. Um, the borough's prominent role, support the borough's prominent role as a hub for culture, dining, entertainment, tourism, events, and employment. Um, I like that. I just wish that there was more in the way of employment that, that could be done. Um, you know, I, this, is, this has really become a, a bedroom community over the past few decades. And, um, but I, I like the, the idea of making it a hub for employment in the comprehensive plan. And I, I know this is, this is just a plan. It's not, it, it's not our, our zoning ordinance that we're talking about here. Yeah, it's, it's policy. And it, it's, in some instances, it's you know, written so that way you can have some uh, interpretation and implementation. Right. Uh, the other thing that we spoke a lot about in the, as part of the process is you really want to market your community as a destination in this new world because people can live anywhere and work, right? right. So if, um, if you're going to gain employment in your community, I think that that's one thing you have to look at is saying, okay, what does my community have to offer? And then maybe you'll build enough density to say, okay, well, we should open an office here as well, because there's a lot of great things happening. And uh, my employees would want to be a part of that. And, and also as far as the infill housing goes, I, I would like to see the idea of that carried out with, with respect to preserving the character of our, our existing neighborhoods. Um, regarding the transferable development rights. I've I, I've been involved with the regional planning committee since its inception in 2008, off and on. And I know this is often a topic that comes up um, with that group. And uh, over the years, the the borough has been kind of hot and cold on it. Um, Depending on, depend, depending on where the other members of the regional compact are at that point. So, um, but again, I, I think it, it's worth putting that in this document for, um, yeah, and for policy purposes. Noted with any partnership, it, it takes yeah. two to tango, right? So it, it may not be right at, 2022, right. and it may never be right, but uh, because it was in that regional planning document, I felt it was important as well as I'm sure Chester County would have commented if I didn't put it in there, right. that, hey, this regional document identified this. We want to make sure that this idea still holds merit. Okay. And, and just one little thing in the, in the existing land use map. Um, and you know, this is a, a property out on West Bridge Street. It used to be the West Company. I see it's um, colored as retail on this map, but I always thought that was industrial. So. Um, it's based on Chester County um, GIS code. So if it, if it needs to be industrial, we can, I can take a look at it. If you give me a street address or a parcel ID, we can definitely yeah, consider I, that. I, yeah, I don't have. I think the other thing I wanted to, Clear up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a comment on the planning commission that um, that we did incorporate one of the local municipalities as part of the regional plan in one of the maps that we provided. And going back, and I should have thought about it at the time, but I guess we utilized the map that was in a previous plan, and that municipality wasn't part of that regional planning effort at that point in time. So just wanted to make sure that uh, people were aware of that. You have a relatively new municipality to that regional group. Understood. Mr. Moore. Uh, yeah, I, thank you. Um, I, I mainly focused when I reviewed this uh, 
in uh, goals and objectives, page 78, 79, um, the G1 and, and G2. Uh, Phoenixville region set a set of goals to increase the supply of affordable housing units annually for the next decade is one recommendation. G2 was review ordinance requirements and solicit broad feedback to provide ordinance provisions to increase affordable housing supply and not place prohibitive or onerous recommendations. As part of this process, as part of your team, did, did you look at our ordinances and, and identify where there might be other barriers or, or better work to be done yeah. around that? Yeah, there, uh, case in point, uh, uh, one of the comments of keeping the, the, the street, the neighborhoods the same, you have a requirement that there, you cannot introduce a, a, any other housing type that's not on the block from a historical stance of keeping that neighborhood. Well, and then directly then kind of goes counter to providing affordable housing in, in, in your community. Um, you can provide different housing types on the block and maintain the same architectural feeling, setbacks and so forth. So that was one thing that we talked about. There was other things that, we, that came out, um, but it's, it's a difficult conversation to have. Uh, you see that uh, we also identified that the need for identifying what is affordable in this region, because that's consistently changing, at least it was through the process. Mr. Crawford, I might um, later on tonight, there is a resolution to uh, for us to authorize us to submit uh, a grant for uh, TCDI with Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. And the whole purpose of that is to, as soon as we come out of here, is to get funding to redo our zoning ordinance in its entirety. Which has been the long, long next step that we've been talking about with council for a number of years that this is the first document that tees up right. the rest of our documents. So I'm glad to, you know, we'll get to that later tonight. All, but all steps, like we are waiting on this to then initiate that. Other questions, comments from council? Thank you for the, the overview. And I, I know that when we have the hearing, it's not typical, but I think it would be nice for the public um, if we can, you know, have a similar short presentation. Absolutely. Mr. Crack. Well, uh, barring any more questions for you, uh, it would be, a, if you're inclined, it would be appropriate to, uh, for a motion, for a motion to schedule an advertised to public hearing. Um, I don't think you have to say the date specific at the, at the moment, uh, but our target would be at this point, May 10th, uh, if you're inclined. So the motion could be to May 10th or it could be to, to June. Uh, but I think you're, you, you have enough information that you should feel comfortable that the May 10th meeting would be uh, uh, appropriate at this time. I would agree. Uh, I, I still move to hold the public hearing by mid-May. Schedule and advertise. Yes. Second. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Morrison and by Mr. Weiss. Questions on the motion? Uh, I, I do. I, I said mid-May. You, you gave us a, a, an approximate time frame. It's correct. Um, but I heard the sunset is June. So, so we'll want to look to schedule this for May 10th, which is our next, next borough council meeting. Right. So we have input on the public hearing. Um, but will, will any work that this HRG has to perform be able to be completed within the time frame before the, the grant runs out? Good question. So, or Jean. Good. Based on the comments I've received to date, um, yes. And so would we, uh, following the public hearing that night, would we then be able to, to adopt as a, or would we then adopt at the June meeting? It generally, it, it, would, it would refer to the, the questions or recommendations that come from the, the public comment period and whether or not council feels there's enough uh, information to delay the approval until the June meeting or whether the, the information is understood, but that the general uh, plan as presented covers that. Got it. Would so, we ever so we have both able, options. Sorry. Would we ever be able to adopt with the understanding that discussed edits would be made, like updates would be made? Pro probably not. Um, I think of it uh, something that council's more familiar with as a hearing on a zoning ordinance. 
uh, it, it's a similar process to that. It's all set out by the MPC. Um, and if there you know, are material changes that we wanna see, then we you know, might need to hold a, another hearing. Understood. With that, we have a motion and a second to authorize the scheduling and advertising of a public hearing for the um, comprehensive plan update for May 10th, 2022 at our normal borough council meeting. Any other questions on the motion? See, do, do we do we need 30 days? It's, it's April 12th now to do a public hearing, to, to schedule and advertise. Do we have to have been scheduled and advertised by May 10th? We need to. We need to advertise in successive weeks, no more than 30 and no less than seven days prior to the hearing. So we have time. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries 8 0. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you next month. Okay, with that, we will open up our first round of public participation. We will start with, uh, as I announced at the beginning of this meeting, we will start with members who are joining us here uh, live and in person. Members who are joining us virtually can raise their hand digitally. And once we uh, move through the queue of, uh, of residents that are here in the room, we will uh, move over to the Zoom platform. So with that, any members of the public wish to make public comment tonight, please step to the podium, sign in your uh, name and address and uh, let us know who you are. Tell the truth. Uh, good evening. Thanks, Council, for the opportunity to address you. Uh, you have an item later on the agenda regarding the disposition of 123 Main Street by auction. And just as a, as a neighbor, my name is Carl Johnson. I live on Hall Street. Uh, there is nothing between me and 123 Main Street but a parking lot. So that's what we look at. Uh, and we just had some concerns. I hadn't been aware of the uh, potential disposition until yesterday and just wanted to encourage the council to think about whether there's another way to go about the disposition where you might uh, possibly, and maybe you've done this, but possibly look for proposals or look for other alternatives rather than just selling it off by auction without any control over what happens to the site other than normal zoning. Just concerned we have a historic structure in the neighborhood. We have, it's well used or has been during the time we've lived there. And uh, we just don't want to see it potentially torn down, replaced with something that we can't anticipate and what that is going to have an impact on the neighborhood. So just encourage you to think about that before you vote on that motion tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eileen Holsander, and I also live on Hall Street. Um, my concern for the neighborhood regarding, as Carl said, the, uh, the Civic Center, which is being considered later in the evening, um, my concern is that it not be rezoned. It's currently zoned residential, and I would prefer to remain residential. Uh, because there's already a lot of commercial traffic up that side of the, up the other side of the street, and the zoning ends there, and I'd like to, it to stay residential. Thank you. I'm Jane Dugdale, a resident of Phoenixville, um, and I'm speaking on behalf of Phoenixville Area Transition and Phoenixville Green Team to congratulate you on the new comprehensive draft comprehensive plan. I especially congratulate you on the emphasis that it places on developing new parks and trails, especially near the town center. The plan accurately assesses the need for residents to have more quality green open space in order to achieve the livability that we all want. 
I recently walked the incredibly beautiful grounds of the Holy Ghost Church, and I dream of saving that gorgeous space and its amazing trees for posterity. Perhaps this plan will help do that. I also love that the plan specifically encourages the construction of missing trail gaps. Phoenixville has a rich le legacy of trail systems, giving residents access to our numerous waterways. We're fortunate to have the Phoenixville Green Team, who along with their predecessor, PICTA, were a strong force in bringing a number of those trails into existence. I'd like to urge you to add a missing piece to the recommended trails. It's the South Trail, which follows the Schuylkill River on its south bank below Bridge Street. This piece was recommended in an earlier version of the comprehensive plan, but it's missing in this version. The South Trail would go by the river south of Bridge Street along the institutional industrial zones, part of which are owned by Holy Ghost Church, part of which was the former kindergarten center, and part of which is Industrial Park. Adding this piece to the trail system would be key to the trail eventually joining up with Valley Forge Park. Please don't leave it out. I would also like to urge you to take this opportunity to bring into existence an Environmental Advisory Council or an EAC in order to guide the work of implementing the wonderful ideas in this comprehensive plan. The townships surrounding us all have EACs. In fact, as you probably know, that their EACs are organized together to work more effectively. And Phoenixville is missing out on the synergy of their joint work. Of course, Phoenixville has its wonderful tree and beautification advisory commissions, and the nonprofit green team is still very active. The work of Phoenixville area transition is closely related and aims to bring people and groups closer to nature. However, none of these is the same as having an environmental advisory commission of our own, specifically tasked with carrying out the comprehensive plan. Perhaps one of the advisory commissions, tree or beautification could be modified to be an EAC, or perhaps council could figure out another way to make an EAC. I just urge you to do it. Your comprehensive plan is too good to just sit on a shelf. Thank you very much. My name is Dana Waldman. Uh, I live on Hall Street as well. Um, I moved to Phoenixville about eight months ago um, and just recently began getting involved with the Phoenixville Green Team and Phoenixville Area Transition. Um, six, uh, sorry, Phoenixville's sustainable initiatives were a top selling point for me and why I moved here, um, as was the access to nature via parks and trails. Um, so I want to Thank you and Tim for including in your comprehensive plan a focus on parks and trails and open space. I, I think that is wonderful. Um, it's listed in your plan that you have goals to establish, uh, I'm gonna quote this, establish trail corridors through permanent open space or by easement and construct the missing tra uh, trail gaps in the overall regional trail network, as well as supplementing park acreage closer to town center. Well, boy, do we have a solution for you. <laughs> Remember that kindergarten center property that we're all so tired of hearing about? Um, I am too. So how about let's call it Hope Park. We have quite an opportunity here. 7.4 acres of existing green space, conveniently located close to the town center and potential trail extension, plus free stormwater management. I bet we could use this site to cross off a bunch of other goals on this plan too. Just takes a lot of innovation. Now, uh, one thing I did find to be ambiguous in the plan um, 
was the sustainability goals. There was mention of working toward green infrastructure, but uh, we need tangible and immediate actions. And I understand this is something that can be continued to be discussed. So I encourage this to be um, something that is a focus. Um, so it says um, the borough could examine where they could build green infrastructure techniques, but again, no mention of actionable solutions. So I just wanna really encourage that. Um, and as Jane said, I too believe we really need an EAC, which could really help in implementing the solutions um, to help us meet our goals. Um, but something we can do right now and without spending any additional money is just to protect and preserve our existing open spaces. By doing so, we divert hundreds of thousands of gallons of water from entering our rivers, um, not to mention avoiding future dollars being spent on alternative uh, stormwater infrastructure and also damage control. So it's really a no brainer. Um, kind of checks like all the boxes here. So overall, I'd say we share a common vision for the future of Phoenixville one which you say will be a model for sustainability, equity, and innovation. And I'm excited to see the innovation unfold. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in tonight's audience? All right, before we jump to Zoom. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Uh, my name is Chris Duvall. I live at 446 Grand Street. And uh, I am one of those people, that, like so many, that just love the amazing trails that Phoenixville has to offer. Some discovered and some yet to discover. Um, and I also uh, was blessed to have the opportunity the other week to, uh, um, to go to church at Holy Ghost with, with Jane and was, was amazed just how welcoming Father Peter was in the congregation and just how beautiful that site is, and I, I truly hope that with the comprehensive plan that, that you're doing, that that piece that um, is not green on any of your plans um, is penciled in green, so that uh, discussions and dialogue can hopefully at least be discussed to, to hopefully keep it that way, so that not only the church can benefit from that incredible property that they were able um, to get from the the, the Reese family that started this amazing town. Um, but that the community can also maybe someday enjoy realizing that it's not our land, it's, it's their land, and ultimately they're going to do what they want to do with it. But um, just please study what's helping, happening elsewhere around here, whether it be out in West Town, where amazingly at the last second, the community came together to, to buy uh, that huge property on 202, to the Wilson Farm Park, to any other parks that are out there. Um, otherwise, um, it's just going to be infill development, just like everything else that's happening in Phoenixville, or hopefully the church will continue to use it for uh, their mission of what they do so well, and uh, it'll preserve forever. Thanks again for the time. Thanks, Chris. Anyone else here tonight? Okay, we will, oh, we can always come back out. Hello, um, I'm Neil Fallon. I own Phoenix Karate, and I missed my hard meeting last week. Um, so I'm not sure where I go from here. Do I reapply for my decals on my window? What's your street address, Neil? Uh, 316 Bridge Street. You, you were approved 7 0. No. No. Denied. no. Oh, denied. Sorry. <laughs> I'll take the first one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So what? I'll just I'll, I'll just let Jean answer I'm this sorry, one. I'm sorry. So, so right now on the agenda, because you weren't here, uh, the recommendation out of horror, because you weren't there to represent yourself, mm -hmm. is to these folks tonight to deny your application. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to to come up if if they're so inclined they can make a motion to move forward and deny it which means you'd have to resubmit or since they know you're here they may invite you up and you can plead your case and try to convince them 
the harb is a recommended body. It's not a. I'm fine body. with going back to harb. I just. I was told to come here today, okay. by Tom. We will. Uh, we'll give you clear orders in a moment. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sorry, I misread that on the agenda. Uh, I see no other com uh, folks in the audience. We'll jump over to our Zoom members. Uh, if you want to raise your hand digitally, uh, our staff will uh, announce you and unmute you one by one, and you can make your comments. Shannon, I've turned on your microphone. Hello. Um, so I, I am Shannon. I live on 338 Washington Avenue. I uh, just wanted to point out an unfortunate um, flaw in the public participation process regarding the comprehensive plan. Um, I realized tonight that this is still happening when someone else tried to send an email. Uh, in August, I tried to reach out to Mr. Staub with some comments using the email that's listed on the borough website for the comprehensive plan. And I got a bounce back saying that it was blocked. Um, eventually, I was able to talk to him over the phone about my comments, but somebody else tonight tried to email and it also bounced back. So I'm not sure how many times this has happened. I don't think that we could be the only ones that it's happened to. So I wanted to um, suggest that you provide an updated contact on the Borough Comprehensive Plan website. Um, and also, I, I definitely don't think the plan adoption should take place on the same night as the public hearing. Um, just because I'm not sure how many members of the public haven't been able to provide comment because of that issue. So I definitely would support you delaying the approval until at least the June meeting following the May public hearing. Um, so, and I also just wanted to voice my support also for establishing a borough EAC um, to help implement this comprehensive plan. Uh, all the, EACs in the region work together. We're the only municipality in the region that really doesn't have one. And um, I think we're a big missing piece of that puzzle. And I think having the EAC at a at official borough level would help level up our intentions to be a more sustainable community. So thank you, that's it. Thank you. Um, and I, Stephanie, I've turned on, I've turned on your microphone. Um, hi, yes, my name is Stephanie Nicolosi. I live at 206 Washington Avenue. I moved here five years ago and I have an intention to stay and for the indefinite future, as long as I keep going in the right direction. Um, I wanted to speak to the comprehensive plan. I, I really like uh, all the things that are outlined in that comprehensive plan. I did want to uh, make note of one of the things that brought me to Phoenixville was the proximity to open spaces, nature trails, walkway trails, and also the ability to for downtown entertainment and things all within walking distance. Um, and that that was a place that I could raise my children in. And I just wanted to emphasize continuing to build up those open spaces, build up those trailways, um, and most importantly, preserve and protect the open spaces that we do have in our community to the best of our ability. The vision that I have for this town, for my town, is that we put Phoenixville on the map for growth, but in a sustainable, environmentally friendly, and economic, um, and a socially economically friendly way. And, but most importantly, the environmental piece for that, for that, what we're leaving for the future for our children. Um, and one thing I would like to see, and I, I would like to gain better clarity on is how we're going to, you, you all plan to hold uh, boundaries to residential growth while maintaining environmental standards. Uh, what demands are you going to make for uh, incoming uh, residential development in, and business development um, that is going to 
maintain environmental and ecological standards and the impact to those as well as our community. Um, so, and I haven't heard the term EAC uh, previously, probably because I've not been paying attention to, to some of these other people that I am in contact with, that, um, like Jane, but um, I love the idea of an EAC and that sounds like a really smart move for what I know you all also seem to dream of sustainability and as well, and, and this is how I see we bring it to fruition right now because we don't have time to wait. Um, we need to do it now. Um, and that's, that's just um, what I would like to state. Thank you. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes. <laughs> this is David Lutzker um, from Morgan Street in the borough. Um, I'm here to start as president of the Phoenixville Green Team. Um, you received uh, mine and Jane's email earlier today regarding the comp plan. Anybody who has spoken before me and mentioned the Green Team can add my name as a supporter of those comments. I will not repeat them. I will add one comment about enhancing the process for soliciting public comment. I'd like to propose a metric to measure your success in engaging the public. Uh, and not just to measure it, not just by what you've done to invite the public and how many websites it's been available to, but rather, the number of actual members of the public who have been engaged in one way or another. Um, perhaps you're happy with the level of engagement and I don't know what those numbers are, I'd love to hear them. Um, but of course, I'm sure it could be better. Um, and I think that's a metric worth um, having and, and, and using in the future as a measure of success. Um, but also in light of Shannon's comment about Mr. Staub's email and some issues, I would like to request that public comments be allowed to continue for another week or two to allow time for, um, for the, the consultants to take them into account. Um, speaking as myself now, uh, I wanna mention um, the goal of including the full range of housing options, affordable housing, is a relative thing. Affordability is relative. Um, so it does have, as far as I know, um, an actual definition of what affordable housing is, uh, what the income level is considered to be. Uh, in order to include the full range, we might need to include uh, what I believe called low income housing, um, which for many people um, would be affordable. Um, and my last comment is about <clears throat> a couple of questions about growth, about um, walking to work, uh, walking to work hopefully to well-paying jobs and what the borough can do. Uh, obviously um, anything that's you know, private business is in, not in our control. So what can we control? And I became aware that I'm using this pronoun we, um, we the public, it's often borough council uh, but hopefully that mirrors what the public, uh, how the public feels. Uh, so what can we control? So when we have land, when land is in public hands, where we have site control, it's a really good place to start. Um, and I'm talking, of course, not just about 123 Main Street, um, but in general, land that we hold, we have some control over what will happen there. And I threw out this idea, and I'm not a borough planner, but um, a business incubator. Uh, at one time, we gave a LERDA, a tax break, to encourage residential development or, or to a particular developer. And, and without having given that tax break, we probably wouldn't have had the right revitalization we've had in the borough. Um, so it's a, a wonderful tool to encourage what you want to see for the good of the public. Um, having a business incubator uh, and providing appropriate tax breaks um, might be a way to bring good paying jobs that people can work to. 
there's this tremendous multiplier when you have people who are working in the downtown area. If they go to have breakfast, they buy a coffee, they'll go to lunch, they'll do a little shopping, they'll stay after dinner, have a drink. Um, you know, it, it's just, that, that really should be an important goal. And we should do what we can to reach that goal. Um, Mr. Kirchner mentioned infill housing to maintain the character of the neighborhood. But once it leaves your control, within the, within the of course, the, the zoning, but things can really get out of hand. Um, and when we control it, then we can maintain the character of the neighborhood and guide things in the direction we want to go. Thank you very much. Mike, I've turned on your microphone. <laughs> Um, in regards to the sale of 123 South Main Street, I'm speaking on regards to my property at 10 North Main. In the event of a public sale, will the funds be then just added to our budgets or will they be utilized to offset the cost of the Civic Center? Uh, the cost of the Civic Center resulted in nice healthy increase in taxes all across the board. Um, so primarily my question is, Will this be an open public true bid? And will those funds be truly going towards offsetting the new Civic Center? Thank you. At this time, there's no other hands raised. Okay, with that, we'll close the first round of public participation. Uh, up next on our agenda is our consent agenda. We have 15 items for consideration. I will ask uh, to uh, I'll ask Scott to speak quickly on item four, um, which Mr. which uh, Neil brought up in public comment. Sure. Uh, if it is council's pleasure uh, to remove. Uh, the motion to deny the certificate of appropriateness for the window decal at 316 Bridge Street, as recommended by HARB. Uh, it would be uh, my suggestion that if Mr. Phelan is interested in moving forward and council is interested in allowing him another chance to uh, present to HARB, uh, that uh, he be permitted to withdraw his application. Uh, Pursuant to section 12105 of the borough code, uh, borough council is required to take action on this application tonight. The only way uh, that it would not be required to take action tonight uh, is if Mr. Fellon agrees to withdraw his application and then he could resubmit and start the process over. Oh, I'd like to just make a quick comment here. Um, I would recommend, if that's okay with you, I'd totally recommend that because we were wondering if, you know, since you weren't there, Harb did not know what to do with it. It was definitely a, uh, you know, like there were parts of it that were okay. And then there were parts that were just not. And if somebody was there to discuss it, maybe be like, you know, that's how we do it in Harb. You just, you yeah. can fix things on the fly. And if he could just move it back to Harb and just go back and talk to Bulker and get it all set up again, I think that is the appropriate way to handle this. So pertaining to the consent agenda, we should pull this from the consent agenda? Correct. Okay, so we'll okay. start by pulling this item from sure. the consent agenda. And that will uh, send it back to Harb under the normal report, uh, report outs. Do we need that motion now or when we get nope. to the consent agenda? Scott. We would actually need the motion since it's been pulled from the consent agenda uh, later in the agenda yep. when we discuss the other HARB issues. Okay. So right, but when do we need the motion to pull it from the consent agenda? We, it's already been pulled. Okay. Yep. Okay, any other questions on any of the other uh, items on the consent agenda? Do we have a motion to uh, uh, accept the consent agenda as, as uh, amended? So moved. Motion by Mr. White, second by Mr. Kirkner. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. I always forget that Ms. Webb is joining us virtually, so thank you for speaking up. Um, and that brings us to item six, uh, communications and council participation. 
any updates, uh, correspondence or communications the council would like to relay uh, at this point. We will have another round of this later on in the night if anything comes up, but. Okay, seeing none, I will move on to our mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all so much for being here today. And uh, thank you also to those of you who are joining us uh, virtually. A couple of things to update. A lot is going on in Phoenixville. Once again, I apologize. I've actually lost my voice from emceeing so many events that we've bring, been bringing back online. Uh, but I just wanted to give a special uh, congratulations uh, to our Phoenixville a White Horse uh, rugby team. Our women's team won the semifinals this last weekend up at Friendship Field. It was really exciting and also very exciting to see the uh, new Civic Center uh, playing backdrop, although not open yet, was at least playing backdrop uh, to that incredible event. So congratulations to our women's uh, White Horse rugby team. Also a very special congratulations to all of our award winners from the Chamber Annual Award Dinner, which was held uh, two weeks ago. And our very own Director of the Office of Emergency Management, Karen Williams, a one outstanding citizen of the year. So congratulations to Karen and all of the award winners. Um, also, I wanted to give a shout out to More Kids on Bikes and the Phoenixville Inferno Bike Team. This last Sunday, they held their one of their first uh, large scale events to raise money for our Bike Skills Park, which will eventually will move its way to Reservoir Park. And they actually raised Sixteen thousand um, dollars in an afternoon, and probably had close to two hundred attendees. Uh, families coming from all over the region to help support that initiative, and a lot of excitement around that. So, if you aren't familiar with that yet, it's our uh, bike skills park, and that's done in conjunction with the borough More Kids on Bike, which is a nonprofit in Phoenixville Inferno, which is a mountain bike team, also nonprofit here in the borough of Phoenixville. Congratulations to Barnstone Art Live, another great. Uh, organization. If you'd like to research them, they're right here in Phoenixville and they do art informed therapy. They had their live auction uh, last weekend and uh, did quite a lot of, uh, it brought a lot of joy to a lot of people um, through their art. Thank you, especially also to the Rotary. They had a roast last Thursday. I got to be the roastee. I'm still alive and thank you for uh, making sure I made it out fairly unscathed. Um, coming up, we have the clinic murder murder mystery uh, this coming Thursday. Check out the clinic's website for more information. I am not getting, I am not the murderer nor being murdered. I'm just an MC at that event, so just a uh, heads up. Also, very happy to report that Dogwood is back this year, and it will run May 18th through the 21st. Oh. That is, it's very exciting news. I think it's a very exciting news, especially to uh, all those who are also helping to plan it. So thank you to all of the volunteers and the people who help to support the Dogwood each year. Um, it will be running from that Wednesday through that Saturday. And also on the 21st, uh, May 21st at 1 p.m., we will have our Dogwood Parade. So after a two year hiatus, the parade is also back up and running. I want to give a very special shout out. We have some incredible musicians in the borough of Phoenixville. And if you have not had an opportunity, I would encourage anyone to go and check out our open mic nights. I think more so they're in, like incredible sh music shows. We have one at the Sound Bank on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night at the Sound Bank on Main Street. And then on Thursdays um, at uh, Steel City right there on the corner of Main and Bridge. Just incredibly talented individuals here within the borough. It's a good two to three, two and a half hour show. So um, I would encourage you to go and watch those and encourage the young artists that we have here within the community. And then finally, I'll wrap it up with um, next Tuesday, April 19th. We are very fortunate that Phoenixville will play host to the state of the sixth. Um, representative Chrissy Houlihan will be here, our congressional representative, and will be at the Colonial Theater and uh, will be giving us an update about all of her activities and certainly the state of the sixth uh, congressional district. So please check that out online. The event starts at seven, the doors open at 6.30. There are some protocols, um, including vaccinations and things that you will need uh, to follow. I would encourage you to check out um, Chrissy Houlihan's website to get that um, information and those details. But anyone who is able to, I would definitely encourage you to attend, especially since it's right here at our historic Colonial Theater. And then finally, um, I hope all of the our wonderful students are enjoying their spring break. And for those of you who are celebrating holidays or are continuing to celebrate holidays, I hope you have a very restful time with your family over the next couple of weeks. So thank you all very much. Thanks for being here. And thanks for making Phoenixville an incredible place to be. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With that, uh, 
The next item on tonight's agenda, we have appointments and public resolutions. We do not have any uh, current uh, openings on any of our boards and commissions. Uh, with our consent agenda, we backfilled the two openings that were up for renewal. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful for all the residents who do take part on our various boards and committees. It is nice to have a full slate um, assisting us in these processes. If you are interested in joining a future vacancy of a on any of our boards or committees, please uh, reach out to either borough staff or your borough council representative, and we'll put you in touch with how to how to complete that process for a future vacancy. Uh, with that, uh, under uh, item nine tonight, we have new business, um, and we have a, a motion coming out of uh, civil service commission. Um, Mr. Crack, if you have brief background on this item. Sure, basically it's, it's, it's change, it's reversing the order of the, uh, the written and oral exams. Currently the written exams uh, are weighted at 60% at, uh, at and the oral are 40%. And given the experiences uh, that uh, uh, they have seen over the, the past several years, they wanna change that and put the weight of written at 40% and the weight of oral at 60%. And, and that's really the only change. And it's something I know we've discussed in, uh, in a couple of formats or I've discussed with you and it sounds like a great change. I think everybody discussed it with the mayor. It sounds like a good move forward to, uh, to keep things moving. Um, what is council's pleasure for this item tonight? Mr. President, I'll move to approve the civil service commission recommended changes to their rules and regulations. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss. Questions on this motion for this rule change? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. With that, we have four uh, ordinances and resolutions to consider tonight under item 10. With council's pleasure. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution acknowledging Christopher Bowers for his six years of service on the Borough Planning Commission. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by, by Ms. Dugan. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. I will also make a motion to adopt a resolution acknowledging Steve Jarman for his five years of service on the Borough Human Relations Commission. Second. I'm sorry, we had a motion and a, okay, we had a motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss, questions on the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. And then we have a TCDI application. Uh, Mr. President, I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application to the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission's Transportation Community Development Initiative Grant Program. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss for the TCDI application we discussed earlier tonight in relation to comprehensive plan. Any questions on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. I will pause just a moment here. Uh, as is tradition, I will read these um, resolutions acknowledging uh, service uh, into the public record. Um, we were just moving a little quick there, so I wanted to take a quick break just to recognize uh, those who have helped us out. Um, so for starting with item A, uh, the Borough of Phoenixville, a resolution of gratitude for the public service of Christopher, Christopher Bowers as a member of the Phoenixville Regional, or, sorry, the Phoenixville Planning Commission for the borough of Phoenixville, Chester County, Pennsylvania. Whereas Christopher Bauer served diligently and honorably as a member of the Phoenixville Planning Commission since March 8th, 2016. And whereas Mr. Bowers provided an invaluable service to the Phoenixville Planning Commission during that time. And whereas Phoenixville Borough Council wishes to express its thanks and full appreciation to Christopher Bowers for all of his efforts and commitment to the Planning Commission while performing his duties. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Borough Council of the Borough of Phoenixville that Christopher Bowers is recognized and publicly acknowledged for his commitment and efforts in performing his duties and further does offer their best wishes in his future endeavors. I do thank Chris, I, I, having worked with him on planning commission on council, he was, uh, he was a, a heap of help on a number of issues. Um, I'd, like also, to, I'd like to echo that having been the representative for the past two years 
very, very astute, very, uh, lot, paid a lot of attention to all the technical details more than I could half the time. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll make sure to, to transmit a copy of that resolution to, to Chris. And with that uh, resolution, um, Borough Phoenix will have a resolution of gratitude for the public service of Stephen Jarman as a member of the Human Relations Commission for the Borough of Phoenixville, Chester County, Pennsylvania. Whereas Steve Jarman served diligently and honorably as a member on the Phoenixville Human Relations Commission since December 12th, 2017. And whereas Mr. Jarman provided an invaluable service as the Phoenixville Human Relations Commission during that time. And whereas Borough Council wishes to express its thanks and full appreciation to Steve Jarman for all of his efforts and commitment to the Human Relations Commission while performing his duties. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Borough Council of the Borough of Phoenixville that Steve Jarman is recognized and publicly acknowledged for his commitment and efforts in performing his duties and further does offer their best wishes in his future endeavors. And again, I think Steve was with us on HRC for since the beginning of forming that committee. So I do appreciate his time and commitment to that group. Uh, and uh, we will duly transmit that to, uh, to Mr. Jarman. Um, Okay, with that, we'll get back onto the agenda here with item 10, or item D of, of part 10. So item D is a resolution authorizing the sale of the borough owned real estate located at 121 and 123 Main Street. Uh, we know this is the former civic uh, center. Uh, the borough is required by state law uh, and the borough code uh, for property above a certain value. Um, which I believe is 18,500, although it may have changed at the beginning of the year, but it's a value we certainly hope that this property is worth more than. Um, so uh, we are required to put a property of this value that we seek to sell out to bid. Uh, one of the ways to do it is by auction. Uh, and we have identified Max Span uh, auctioneers as a, a professional company that, uh, I have experience with working in the past and I believe Gene does as well. Uh, so uh, this resolution uh, is to authorize the borough to sell its ownership interest in this property and engage Max Span Auction Company to conduct an, conduct an auction uh, pursuant to the professional services agreement attached to the resolution. And for borough council president, borough manager and the borough solicitor, to prepare, negotiate, execute, and record all necessary and appropriate documents in order to accomplish the same, including but not limited to any and all documents necessary to complete the sale of the property. And uh, to let you know, uh, I did prepare uh, a bid package uh, that is a part of, of uh, this resolution. Uh, I reviewed the professional services agreement uh, and negotiated a red line with Max Span. Um, so, so this all has my uh, blessing as solicitor. Um, so with that, um, I would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution as written. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Carmenio, second by Mr. Weiss. So uh, just one of the points I wanted to, to uh, Further explain uh, the, you know, the, the process for the auction. Should we not be pleased with the outcome of the auction, we are not obliged to the outcome. That is correct. Um, we internally uh, will set a value that, if the auction does not exceed, uh, that we are uh, free to reject all bids and uh, move forward with an alternative means of sale. When or if an auction takes place, how much knowledge will we have of the intent of the purchaser at that point? Uh, as much as we would most purchasers, uh, one of the things that uh, we ensure is included in the agreement of sale uh, and we have prepared a draft agreement of sale that uh, any purchaser would have to enter into. Um, so we can set the terms, uh, which then dictates the value. Um, but they are required to comply with our zoning ordinance. 
when we made the decision to do this in the February, I was just checking back through the records. We 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 made it, the borough approved this motion um, back, which came out of the finance committee back in the February borough council meeting. So to a certain extent, our decision to do this, at least the first step in it was made in that in that February meeting. We we instructed the solicitor to proceed with this process. Correct. And at this point, we don't feel like another avenue, there would be interest in the property through other avenues. Well, we're really limited in the types of avenues we can pursue, especially initially. Uh, there are provisions in the borough code uh, that if you don't receive an acceptable bid, and, and there's qualifiers to that, it's not just we don't like it, but um, if we don't accept receive an acceptable bid, uh, then we can explore some alternative avenues, but we can't start that way. And um, we can do it through an through a auction or a sealed bid. And we're we we're, we're doing the the live. I think it's a live virtual auction for this one. Correct. Okay. Uh, can someone remind me what the um, zoning is? R one or R I. And for the public, can you explain? residential infill? Yep. <coughs> Mr. President, yes. I have a question with regard to the mechanics. Once the once the auction is closed, um, and a a top bidder has been determined, then does that come back to council for vote? It would. We would have to approve an agreement of sale at a public meeting. Um, and to get into the weeds a little bit more, uh, everyone who is interested in bidding has to submit a bid bond to the auction company so that the you know successful highest bidder uh, automatically has some skin in the game and it does qualify them as having the means to do it Correct. to some extent right. are, are there any other reasons to reject the bids besides financial if it doesn't meet your expectations like is there any other way out of it? Like if you didn't like the end result? Uh, I, there's certainly always other reasons. It's impossible to come up with everything. Um, it, one would be if someone wanted to negotiate the agreement of sale that we prepared, um, or if we uh, have knowledge that they do not intend to follow the zoning ordinance. Uh, which would be a violation of the agreement of sale that we've prepared. Um, those types of things. Correct. If they propose a change of zoning as a part of an agreement of sale, uh, we would not be required to move forward. Other questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. Next on our agenda is a public hearing. Uh, so we will need a motion to recess the public meeting and open a public hearing. Well, before we do oh. that, um, sorry. Uh, I, uh, in reviewing this agenda packet, I had some conversations with borough staff and borough council president. Um, and it's my suggestion that uh, the zoning ordinance uh, be considered uh, a little bit more in depth by planning commission and policy committee. Um, I, I just like to have another review to make sure that there's not unintended consequences that are possible. Um, so if with that recommendation, borough council would be in agreement, my suggestion would be uh, that we open the public hearing and we continue the hearing on the record to the May 10th meeting at seven o'clock. Uh, that would allow us to not have to pay to re-advertise the hearing if there are no changes. If this ordinance goes to the Planning Commission and Policy Committee and after review, we decide that we're happy with how it's written. Um, if we 
send it back and we do need changes, then we will need to re-advertise the ordinance. Uh, but I think that that's time well spent. Um, so after continuing the hearing, we would then close the hearing and uh, consider a motion to refer the zoning ordinance to the Planning Commission and Policy Committee. So at this point, do you need a motion to open the public hearing? Yes, to recess the public meeting, meeting and open the and public open. hearing. So moved. Second. We have a motion to recess the public meeting and open a public hearing. Uh, questions on the motion? We have a, a motion and a second. Uh, questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. So this hearing is to consider an ordinance amending the borough zoning ordinance to redefine and update the zoning provisions related to adaptive reuses in all zoning districts, including amendments to section 27105, 27202, and section 20, 27301, and section 27405. This hearing was duly advertised by the Pottstown Merc Mercury on March 28, 2022, and April 4th, 2022. Um, based on our my earlier discussion, uh, I would entertain a motion to continue this hearing on and the consideration of the adaptive reuse zoning ordinance amendment until the borough council meeting scheduled for May 10th, 2022 at 7 p.m. So moved. Second. So moved by Ms. Berkeley, seconded by Mr. Weiss. Uh, is there any discussion or questions by borough council? Yes, I have comment on it the um, phoenixville regional planning committee we already reviewed this ordinance and sent back to council um, or sent back to the borough uh, the consistency review on this um, and if i'm not mistaken we had also discussed this in policy committee uh, quite a bit so um, um, uh, pardon me, but I'm, I'm struggling a little bit as to why we would defer action on this this evening if it's already been through those uh, review processes. I, so I think this would be a gene term of belts and suspenders to make sure there's a couple of places that we just want to iron out some language. Um, and we felt it would be best to, to bring it back to policy and, and make sure that uh, any items that we're looking at um, that we're, we're not having any uh, blind spots. So there, you know, there's just a couple issues that we thought it was just worth uh, ironing out and taking another month to do. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so when it returns to, will it return to planning and policy simultaneously and and how how will at least from the planning perspective since I'm representative there how will they be engaged and what will they what will planning commission be able to we'll wind up we'll take it to planning on Thursday because we got a light agenda so we'll take it to planning and and sort of bring up some of the topics that we've talked about internally uh, with with Scott and then policy comes up uh, April 26th. So barring substantial changes, uh, you know, really significant changes, uh, it would be ready to go before council on the 10th. Uh, if that doesn't occur and we realize that we've got more changes and, and we need to make those changes then to, to rich's point we have to go back through that process because we will have changed it enough that we have to re-advertise it and possibly have to go back to re uh, uh regional and, and uh county it's really uh this is a this is a rather significant change and there's some, there's some phrasing in there that after having looked at some things that have transpired over the last couple of months, we've looked at it internally again and going, is that really what we want to do? And we want to make sure because it, it's, it's zoning and yep. we don't want to have unintended consequences. Okay, thank you. I just was I wanted to understand the flow. 
from and, here till next month. And I would add, I, I understand that this has gone through, you know, a significant process already. So I don't make my recommendation lightly. Any other questions or comments? Um, may I have a vote on the motion? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Eight zero. Um, and with that, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing so and moved. resume the public meeting. Well, we have to close the public hearing first, so so moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Berkeley and a second by Mr. Weiss to close the public hearing and resume the public meeting. Point of order, are we closing the public hearing or continuing it? The motion that was just made was to continue the public hearing and now we need to close the public hearing. I understand the confusion, but we need to continue the hearing in the hearing and then we need to close the hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries 8 0. I'll make a motion to refer the adaptive reuse zoning ordinance amendment back to Planning Commission and Policy Committee for further review, consideration, and recommendation. Second. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Ms. Webb, coming in from outfield, from left field there. Uh, questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. All right. Uh, moving on to item uh, section 12 of our agenda, we have reports of committees, boards, and commissions. Mr. Moore with Planning Commission. Uh, as it stated, uh, no action to report, no, no formal decisions were made on any projects in our last meeting. Uh, we did also have a presentation at that time of the comprehensive plan update, uh, which is very much appreciated. Uh, our next session will be uh, this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, with grateful appreciation to Mr. Uh, Kirkner. He'll be, um, let's say, crack, sorry, uh, he will be filling in for me because I have Holy Thursday services to go to. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, Ms. Dugan with HARB. Well, we have that one thing that we just took out of there, and I'm not exactly sure how to go about seeing if we can send this back to HARB. So we, uh, we, I would suggest, uh, Mr. Fallon, if you could come to the podium. And Neil, do you have any problem with this, uh, with withdrawing your application so this can be reconsidered by HARB at the next meeting? I do not. That suffice. Uh, you do understand you would have to resubmit an application. I'm fine with that. Uh, with that, I think we can accept your withdrawal of the application, and we are not required to take any action because no application is longer in front of us to consider. Great. So no, no motion needed at this point. Correct. Thank you, Neil. Thanks Thank so you. much. Anything else, Ms. Dugan? No, that's all. Thank you. With that item, uh, see, we have regional uh, planning committee, Mr. Kirker. There's just not much to report from there, Mr. President. Very Thank good. Uh, Ms. Dugan with Rec Board. She'll make up for it. I will definitely <laughs> make up for it. It is really that time of year and I have, I'm gonna do my best here, but I'm looking at seven pages of stuff. So get comfortable. All right, we have got coming up the youth, youth CrossFit, that as all of this information, by the way, is going to be on the website at all times. So you can always look it up. This is just the highlights of what we're offering at the moment. So the youth, youth CrossFits, that's Saturday mornings from April 23rd to May 28th for 13 to 18 year olds. There's the Phoenix, uh, the Family Phys Ed, and that's the 60 minutes. Um, that's outside at Friendship, um, at Pat Nattle Field. And, um, the Shiny Knights Chess Club, that's from uh, that's on Wednesdays from May 18th to June 22nd from 4.30 to 5.30 for 6 to 13-year-olds. Um, the, the disc golf clinic will be starting. That's uh, kids and adults can learn the basics of disc golf in two sessions. 
And there are two different things. There's from five to 10 year olds, and that's mon Monday, May 9th and 16th, and 11 and up, adults included, on Wednesday, May 11th and 18th. The Young Rembrandts, which is a mixed media art class. And that's where everybody learns how to draw. And that's for um, five to 12 year olds. They have Mother's and Father's Day workshops. And that's a lot more drawing with that. Um, the uh, Mother's Day one is May 6th from 5.30 to 7. And the Father's Day one is June 17th from 6 to 7.30. Youth yoga, um, that's uh, the, uh, April 20th to May 28th. Snapology, mini figurine mania. Um, and that's when you can build all kinds of, that's, that's a lot of different things. Then the summer registration open house, um, a, a summer registration open now for the summer tennis camp. Uh, that's from grades two to 12, a uh, three week clinic in July. Uh, that's July 11th to J July 29th. Uh, there's the summer basketball league and uh, that's the, I can't get a date on here. Oh, uh, that's uh, the first games will be played on Father's Day, June 19th. Um, we've got Snapology summer camps. There's a couple of these. There's junior engineers where you can build fun models with Duplo, Duplo blocks. Um, combat robots inspired by battle ro robots. Um, all of these are in June 13th to 17th. The second, the one before that was uh, uh, May 25th. There's a couple you have to check the website because there's so many different ones of these. Then we get the uh, continuing with uh, Snapology. There is the Pokemania where students can build and explore the world of Pokemon as they create their own gyms, battles, and their own generation of Pokemon. Science Explorers. And there's a couple weeks of these. The first week is rock and concoctions. And uh, that comes from kitchen chemistry. And then there's the take a dive, which gets into marine biology. That was the week two one. Uh, the jumpstart summer sports camps. There's the, this is at the uh, Phoenixville Recreation Center, Ultimate Warrior, August 1st to 5th. That's more of a fitness challenge. Uh, and the college days is August 8th to 12th, and that just has um, college sports selections. Yoga, all ability classes, and that's at the new uh, recreation center on um, Mondays from 6 to 7. Table tennis starting, I guess it just started, April 5th for the new at the new uh, recreation center Tuesdays from six to nine core strength and flexibility. Um, that is a 45 minute class on strengthening your core. And that's a, um, a session that goes Tuesdays from six 30 to seven 15, April 26 to May 31st for six weeks. And I think I reached the end of it. So that's the end of I have. That was quicker than I expected. Thank you, Ms. Dugan. Uh, with that, uh, any reports out of, I don't believe there was any reports out of BAC or TAC this month. BAC celebrated nine years yesterday, so that was exciting. Nine years of existence. Oh, great. Thank you, Ms. Webb. And Tech had some hefty conversation, but both uh, the chair and I were absent, so we'll be catching up. Understood. With that, we'll go to police personnel, uh, Ms. Berkeley. Uh, all of our action was uh, involved in the consent agenda. And our next meeting will be, is that the 3rd of May? The 1st, the 2nd of May. Um, so I anticipate some good conversation then. It was a light agenda this past month. Great, thank you. Mr. Moore, Parks and Rec. Uh, most of our items were dealt with with the Parks and Rec uh, session, although um, I do have a couple of things to report. One is a, uh, uh, a presentation by the, um, uh, the Whitehorse Rugby Club uh, in conjunction with the Phoenixville Cricket Club concerning Veterans Park and putting up a proposal that they brought to the, uh, to the committee 
uh, to uh, raise the funds for and to put lights on the uh, Veterans Park in order to, for both teams to be able to use that uh, at more extended hours. Um, so uh, it's, and they were a pretty good proposal. And so the committee recommended that uh, they proceed with the, the discussion with staff on that. So um, uh, they believe they can raise the funds and they have a proposal and they're working with the, with the department right now to figure out whether that can be doable. And we'll have more no news for you on that, I guess, after the next committee meeting. Yes, Mr. Crack. Just a reminder that uh, next Friday uh, at 11 o'clock is the ribbon cutting ceremony for uh, the new recreation center. And then the following weekend on Saturday, uh, the uh, April 30th is the open house from 11 until till one. So it's real exciting times in the next uh, week and a half. And Mr. Kirkner with policy. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I would uh, make a motion. Uh, let me let me get to my agenda here. Sorry, you, you caught me off guard here. Um, there we go. Okay, I, I would like to make a motion that uh, we advertise um, an ordinance amendment to Chapter Fifteen which is motor vehicles and traffic. Um, as noted in the packet, this is with regards to uh, electric vehicle parking and charging and permits. Second. Motion by Mr. Kirkner, second by Mr. Weiss. Questions on the motion for advertising the uh, ordinance amendments, chapter 15. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed, motion carries 8-0, Mr. Kirkner. Yes, and I make a motion that we, uh, the council adopt uh, proposed changes to uh, borough council procedural rules and regulations as uh, recommended in committee three to zero. Second. Motion by Mr. Kirkner, second by Ms. Berkeley. Questions on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Anything else, Mr. Kirkner? Nothing else. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Weiss with ITT. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no action to report at this time. Our next meeting is uh, one week from tonight on 419 at 7 p.m. Thank you. And lastly, Ms. Dugan with finance. There's nothing else. Fantastic. Uh, with that, we will open our second and final round of public participation for those who were with us earlier tonight uh, or weren't with us, I should say. We will start with uh, members of the public who are here joining us in, in person. Uh, after that, any members who are joining us on Zoom may uh, raise their hand digitally and members of our staff will announce your name and unmute you. So with that, any members of the public who are here in the room tonight, uh, please step forward and... Okay. With that, we'll move on to Zoom. At this time, Mr. Ewald, I have no hands raised. Okay. Okay, with that, we'll close this round of public participation. Uh, members of council will notice that we did add a section um, of item 15 is communications and council participation. Just in case anything else came up during the course of the meeting that uh, council wanted to update, uh, either council or the public. The one item I wanted to bring up is that uh, starting today, we did begin receiving our final items for the Phoenix Neo project, which will uh, I believe there's some more deliveries coming in later in the week, but we are back on schedule with deliveries from that with some uh, delayed shipping items. So uh, we are looking to have construction begin on actual installation for our Phoenix Neo HTC project uh, this week. Uh, with that, any other council communications or updates? Seeing none, and uh, I do welcome Ms. Webb to our first meeting. Uh, hopefully next month we'll have you in person. Um, staff reports are in your packets. We do have a need for executive session tonight to discuss real estate and litigation. I do not believe we'll be voting on any items uh, in executive session tonight. It's not my expectation. Okay. So with that, we can, have a, we can adjourn into executive session. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Ms. Berkeley. 
Questions on the motion, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries 8-0. Uh, so the public meeting is now adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming tonight.